Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and we're down here in the shop. And uh, today's subject is going to be making buck and ball cartridges. Now, whenever I do a smoothbore video, uh, I will get comments, and not just a few, but I'll get a lot of comments asking me about buck and ball cartridges. Why please make a buck and ball video? And for years now, if you've been following the channel, uh, you know I have avoided that. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One is, I have to say personally, I'm not that jazzed about buck and ball. That's just the way it is. Uh, I've loaded it, not in paper cartridges, you know, just uh, loose with wadding. And I guess I've never really been impressed with the effects, but part of that's because I've always been shooting at a single target. And that's the other issue with doing a buck and ball video, is uh, how do you do an effective, realistic test for buck and ball? I mean, it's, it's really kind of hard. But I gave it some thought, and my first solution was just not doable. It would have required me buying like a hundred uh, ballistic gel torsos to shoot at because I would have had three ranks of ten uh, lined up and I would have shot them at 25, 50, and 100 yards. And I actually thought about this so I went and I looked up the prices of gel torsos and even with the cheap ones we'd be talking about three years revenue for this channel <laughs> to, to buy that array. So that was no good. So I went back to the drawing board and uh, if everything goes right tomorrow I'm going to be doing this test and um, you know, I've got high hopes for it. it. It's fairly involved. It might not look like it when you see it, but it is. I'm going to have nine full-size silhouette targets. Uh, and they all have to have backers and stands and the whole bit. So it's going to be nine in a row. And I'm going to shoot the center five targets with buck and ball at 25, 50, and 100 yards. I'm not going to shoot the two targets on each, each side because I want to see if they get caught by the spread as we back it up. So that's going to be the test. Uh, so it's going to require me running 30 targets. And um, you know, I think it should be a fair test and fairly interesting. But before we can do that test, and we're going to be doing it in the brown bess here, before we can do that test, obviously, we've got to have some buck and ball loads. And that's the subject of today's video. I'm going to show you exactly how I make these guys here. Okay, so uh, stay tuned for a few minutes and we're going to be on the bench. Well, this is a standard Brown Bess infantry cartridge. The ball is in here, powder is in here. Uh, it's only choked and tied at the very end. The ball isn't choked and tied because it has its own separate pocket to hold it. You're going to see that the buck and ball cartridge looks quite a bit different. It's almost like a Christmas tree. So here's the buckshot, here's the musket ball, here's the powder, and fold it over. Um, you can see that it is choked and tied all along its length. All right, so this is what I'm going to show you how to make. Now, ordinarily, since this is a British cartridge, I would use this as my source, the British Gunner by J. Morton Spearman. Um, this is basically the British officer's ordnance manual for the first half of the 19th century. Uh, however, Spearman does cover 18th century loads because the Brown Bess was still in use, uh, at least in the early part of the century. And he goes over the loads, both 18th century and 19th century, for the Brown Bess. But he doesn't cover buck and ball, which, which is annoying, because we know buck and ball was used by the British Army. It was used by the British Army, by the French Army, by the Prussian Army. Uh, it was used by just about every European army in the 18th century, but couldn't use this as a source. Instead, because buck and ball was the standard load for American smoothbore muskets, uh, I figured I could find it in the American Ordnance Officer's Manual, which I did. 
And I got the 1850 version of that online at archive.org. And it lists the load for buck and ball, which is, which is right here, and that's what we're going to make today. So let me show you how it's done. Okay, here's, here's how we make these. Uh, I put a bead of glue down one edge, but I'm using a brown paper bag skin. That's a dimension for the paper. It's pretty easy. I'm using the same former three-quarter inch dowel that I got from the Jefferson Arsenal, except I've rounded off the other end of it. And I'm going to roll up this paper, leaving about a half inch, three-quarters of an inch at the end of it. Okay. Now, the next trick is to choke it, as it is called. I'm going to put my finger in it. And I'm going to pinch it with this choking string. Okay, now that's just a piece of twine I'm going to show you. Just a piece of twine on a block of wood that I screw down to my workbench. Okay? But it's much better than just pinching it with your hands. Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie off that choked end. I'm going to use a piece of linen thread. This is just some linen thread I got for 18th century leather work. You can use most any string or thread, but I'll just keep it kind of authentic here. I've got about a foot of this, which is more than I need, but I'd rather have more than I need than less than I need. Okay, so I'm going to tie that off. Just in a square knot. Okay, so now we can put the buckshot in. For buckshot, I am using double O buck, right? Just plain old double O buckshot because double O works in a brown bess, which is about 11 gauge. Now, the trick is. But if you're not doing a brown best, say you're doing a Charleville, or even if you're doing a 20 gauge, you're not going to use double O buckshot because it's too big. Uh, you'll use number two or even number four. You're going to have to see what fits your cartridge. And, and here's the trick. I'm just going to pull this out, and I'm going to dump these three in. One, two, three. Now... I get a light out here because I think I should be able to show you this. Okay. Oops. I missed with two of them. Let's do this again. One, three. Okay. So here's the trick. You want to have the three of them lying in one row together just like that. You don't want them overlapping at all. So if you try to use double O buckshot in a Charleville, which is smaller, they are not going to fit completely and you're going to have a problem with it. Right? So that's why you're going to need to use number two or number four depending on what size gun you've got. But once I've got that in, I'm now going to choke down the buckshot, just like I did at the end. I'm going to use that choke cord. And that lets you get a good crimp on there without ripping through the paper. Now, I'm going to take this. I'm going to tie a half hitch in it. I'm going to Kind of reverse this a little bit. I want the knot on the other side from this. This is actually a little bit of a pain to do, I and mean, you could just tie it off, I guess. But this is the way it was done. I'm going to take a half hitch right here. Okay, then I'm going to roll it over. And now I'm going to tie it off on this side the square knot. All right, so I got a half hitch on the other side and basically two half hitches over here. 
to make a square knot. And we have big fat fingers. There we go. Alright, now that that is nice and tight. Okay, so now our shot is secured. Now I'm going to take a 69 caliber musket ball and that's going to go in. Put the stick in again. Now I'm going to choke the musket ball. Now I'm going to tie it off exactly the same way that I tied off the other one. I'm going to put this on the back side. I'm going to tie a half hitch. Half hitch right there. I'm going to roll it over. Tie it off in a square knot. Which, if you don't know how to tie a square knot, it's right over left and under. Tighten, then left over right and under. If you don't do it that way, you get what's called a granny knot and it'll come untied under pressure. Okay, so I'm going to cut this off. And we've got our skin. And now we can put powder in. Okay, for powder, I'm using Swiss 1.5G. Now, this is basically 19th century musket powder which means it's more powerful than they used in the 18th century. So I'm going to use the 19th century Brown Best Load, which is 124 grains, plus a nominal 15 grains for priming. So that's going to bring us up to 140 grains, roughly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load it with my powder measure. And I don't have a 140 grain powder measure. So, I'm going to load 110 grains, followed by 30 grains. Doing this with a camera in the way is not easy. Okay. So there we go, there's a 140 grain load. And the rest is pretty simple. I'm just gonna flatten it out. Fold it over. And there we go. 18th century buck and ball cartridge for the brown bass. And if everything goes right, tomorrow we'll be going to the range and I'm going to test the combat effectiveness of these babies. Well, everything did go according to plan and the next day I was uh, out at the range and I put this to the test. You can see me right now, I'm in the second phase of the test, uh, which is at 50 yards. I did 25, 50, and 100 yards. I had to make some changes to the plan that I told you about, um, but uh, they really didn't affect the integrity of the test, and you'll get to see this in next week's video, and hopefully you will enjoy that one quite a bit. So, uh, I just want to say that, as usual, if you like this content, then you need to give it a big thumbs up and uh, that helps out with the algorithm 
be nice if you make comments if there's anything you care to say and if you're not already a subscriber you might want to subscribe to the channel and uh, make sure you turn on notifications so you find out about the stuff this current video I'm not even gonna to bother to monetize it I know if you saw my thing on monetization uh, I'm just not going to bother to monetize it because I know that YouTube is going to demonetize it because it's making ammunition. And there's just no point in me even playing around with it. And by not even trying to put it through the monetization, I am less likely to get it shadow banned. Uh, so, you know, that's the way we're going to run it. So, you see in this one ad free, uh, maybe the next one too, we'll see. It's, it's just getting harder and harder to, uh, to actually try to make any money off of YouTube these days, but that's okay. So, like I said, if you like it, subscribe. If you like this sort of content, you can also go to MikeBellevue.com, um, where I've got uh, plenty of content, uh, pictures, writing, videos, the whole bit, uh, mostly on black powder subjects. So if you like this, you'll probably like that. And if you want to support the channel, you can do that via Patreon. And I will have a, uh, a link to that in the description down below. So, until next week, I'll see ya.